You probably associate zombies with horror movies. Fiction, right? How could it be that those who have passed on could be possibly reanimated? Is it even possible? Well, prepare yourself to lose sleep because as it turns out, zombies are real. Much more real than you're going to want to believe. Here are 10 real zombie cases that will haunt you. Number 10 is Felicia Felix Mentor. One of the first people to seriously study the zombie phenomenon was Zora Neale Hurston. Back in 1936, Zora documented one of the most famous zombie cases ever recorded and even managed to take a picture of the alleged zombie. It started when an unknown woman stumbled into the Haitian village of Ennery. She walked strangely, had an aversion to light, and moved around with a ragged cloth partially obscuring her face. Locals quickly recognized the woman as Felicia Felix Mentor. She had originally passed in 1907, but had an unmistakable limp due to a problem with her leg. When Zora Neale Hurston investigated further, she asked local doctors about Felicia. They said that not only were zombies real, but a number of powerful sorcerers had perfected a concoction to turn any person into an undead slave. Number nine is Walter Williams. In 2014, Walter Williams came back from the dead. After being pronounced dead by his hospice nurse, the county coroner and a representative from a funeral home collected the body. Walter's pulse was taken again, and both the family and the county coroner agreed that Williams was indeed deceased. But when they transported the body in a black body bag to the funeral home, Williams began kicking as if trying to escape. Horrified, the coroner re-examined the body and concluded that Williams had come back from the dead. Some suspect that his remarkable resurrection was due to an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, which is normally used to correct heart arrhythmia. It's possible that his device malfunctioned somehow and kick-started Williams' heart. However, many others claim that it was a genuine case of zombie resurrection. Number eight is Clairvius Narcisse. Clairvius Narcisse didn't just come back from the dead, he came back from being a zombie. In 1962, Narcisse died suddenly, and he was buried, but then 18 years later, returned alive and well to his family with a tale to tell. He had been resurrected by a voodoo sorcerer known as Bokor, and used as a zombie slave on a plantation for years. Wade Davis from Harvard University proposed a theory to explain this bizarre account. Narcisse was given a powdered mixture which included a pufferfish toxin. This paralyzed the man so that his breathing and pulse were undetectable. After the funeral, the sorcerer dug up the body and administered a plant extract called Datura Stratomonium. This kept him dazed and compliant. However, evidence for this is sparse, and so some believe the sorcerer used ancient knowledge to resurrect the dead. Number seven is the policeman's son. When a policeman's son fell ill in Haiti at the age of 18, he soon exhibited signs of becoming a zombie. His eyes turned yellow, he carried with him a stench of death, and his body bloated. Believing that the cause was a curse, the father was helpless, and his son soon passed away. Referred to by researchers as Wilfred to protect his identity, the dead teenager reappeared 19 months later. He alleged that his uncle had turned him into a zombie. The uncle was imprisoned for life. Though Wilfred exhibited zombie traits such as difficulty speaking, a DNA test revealed that he wasn't related to his family. The uncle believes the entire situation was invented so that Wilfred's father could steal his inheritance. Whoever Wilfred is, it could be that he was made into a zombie just to satisfy a man's greed. Number six is Fee. Anthropologist Roland Littlewood and Dr. Siobhan Doyon 
documented several fascinating instances of real-life zombies. One such case involved a 30-year-old woman referred to as Fee in order to protect her identity. Fee had a short illness and then died suddenly. After this, she was buried near her home. Three years later, she was found walking around a village in a zombified state. When she was examined by doctors, she was diagnosed with a rare form of psychosis known as catatonic schizophrenia. This explained her sluggish movements and zombie-like behavior, such as being unable to speak. No one could be certain as to what happened to Fee after her death. Though, when her grave was opened, they found that it was filled with rocks. Someone had taken the body before she was buried. Number five is Carlos Cameo. During 2007, Carlos Cameo was involved in a highway accident in Venezuela. Unfortunately, he was pronounced dead at the scene. After his family was informed, Carlos's body was transported to the local morgue. The plan was that after the autopsy, Carlos's wife would be asked to identify the body. However, all did not go as planned. As the autopsy began, Carlos suddenly came back to life as a small incision was made onto his face. When his wife finally arrived to identify his body, she found him sitting in a corridor outside, alive and well. No official explanation has been given, and it still baffles people to this day. Accounts like Carlos's support the theory that many legends of the undead come from incidents where a person's pulse and respiration were too low to be measured. Is that the case? Is science the answer here? Or is it something much more sinister? Number four is Adeline's side. The zombie case of Adeline's side took place in 2010 in Haiti. Like most young people, Adeline enjoyed going to parties with friends. But one night after drinking a Haitian drink known as Clarin, he began to experience pains in his stomach. Just a few hours later, his symptoms worsened significantly and he suddenly died of a mysterious illness. Later, Adeline's father discovered a group of men stealing his son's lifeless body. When they realized they had been discovered, the men dropped the body and disappeared into the night. Soon, Adeline woke up, though impaired by the ordeal. It's possible that the men had drugged Adeline with a neurotoxin in his drink so that they could revive him later and keep him sedated as a zombie to do their bidding. Number three is Marie. This zombie case is a fascinating study of how many reports of zombies may get caused purely by grief. Marie was a woman in Haiti who had died supposedly at the age of 18. She had attended a prayer session for a friend who herself had been zombified. Shortly after, Marie became ill and died. 13 years later, now at the age of 31, Marie re-emerged, her family believing that she had been used as a zombie. Anthropologist Richard Littlewood soon discovered that DNA tests revealed that she wasn't part of her family at all. Whether she had went through a zombie process isn't known. However, many believe that the family were so haunted by grief that they persuaded themselves that the new Marie was their deceased daughter. It's now thought similar incidents may explain a large number of zombie cases. Number two is Unid Lazar. Unid Lazar had a debilitating illness for three months before her eventual death. She was then buried on April 3rd, 2008 in Turgot Cemetery in Haiti. Belief in malevolent spirits is rife among religious people in parts of Haiti, and so it wasn't surprising that when asked about his daughter's death, her father claimed that she had been attacked by three dead spirits. After her burial, she was found alive five months to the day at a local marketplace in a nearby town. It was her own father who found her, shocked and filled with joy as he had buried her with his own hands. What happened to Unid remains unclear. When she returned, she was found to have several injuries, her face scarred and her speech slurred in incoherence. It's possible that she was the victim of a secret zombie practice using drugs, but nobody knows. And number one are the BioQuark experiments. 
No list of real zombie cases would be complete without some scientists trying to reanimate the dead. This is exactly what US biotech company BioQuark was trying to do. They're currently running trials on patients who have been declared dead. Although their bodies are being kept by life support systems, they have no brain function and as soon as machines are switched off, they'll stop breathing. BioQuark is injecting stem cells into brain areas to try to rejuvenate and bring patients back from the dead. Previous experiments by the Reanima project in Europe have partially reanimated the brain, but Dr. Ira Pastor at BioQuark believes their tests could be the first to bring the dead patients back to life. That's right, experiments on bodies are happening right now to make zombies a real thing in this world.